Good day, and welcome to the Alphatron Signal Management Product Overview Part 2. My name is Warren, and I'm part of the technical services for Alphatron. My name is Donovan, and I'm part of the technical sales side. Today, we're going to go through most of the equipment that you could use in small to medium and possibly larger meeting spaces, as well as auditoriums and lecture halls. Let's begin with splitters and distribution amplifiers. But before we do, please be aware that we have colleagues in the background waiting to answer any questions you may have during the presentation. Let's begin with our splitters and distribution amplifiers. We're going to review the last product we discussed in Signal Management Part 1, our SUK2 and our SUK4. The Alphatron ALF SUK2 is an HDMI splitter featuring the capability to repeat HDMI or DVI source to two displays simultaneously. Compliance with HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2, the ALF SUK2 provides comprehensive resolution cap capacities up to 4K and 1080p 3D. It's capable of automatically recognizing the resolution and HDCP compliance status of the input signal. The input signal will automatically be equalized for the reliable transmission of proper EDIT management. Moreover, the SUK2 supports convenient online update through USB support. The firmware port right there. That's it. Micro job. USB. The ALF SUK2 is the same as the SUK. AL SUK4 is the same as the SUK2, except it has two outputs extra, making it four outputs. Why it's the SUK2. Yeah. yeah, two in, there, one in, one in, two out, four, four out. out. So yeah, great That's for it. reception areas. So when you have Perfect. one input device, PC, laptop, whatever it might be, to display some information on your company, different parts of the reception area. Sure. It depends on how big versa. the foyer is, you know? 100%, yeah. and then you could use that. Yeah, or if you have two displays, SUK2 is also perfect. 100%. One behind reception, one in front where you have the, you know, where the people go and sit down and wait for their meetings and so on. Yeah. Mm. So perfect. the SUK4T is a four in, one in, four out splitter. There are four HD base T outputs which mm -hmm. connect to the receiver up to 230 feet, 70 meters, or yeah. 131 feet, 40 meters um, for 4K. Yeah. There is an HDMI output for local display as well. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, other features that are overlooked is the fact that the unit supports bi-directional IR as well as RS-232 control. So the unit can be controlled from the display end via IR remote controller or a PC that is connected to a device for RS-232 control. Yeah, so maybe if you have a signal device or signal that you would distribute to multiple places within in a building that's not necessarily line of sight, you want to distribute an HDMI signal far end. So four of them, one HDMI input, four HD base T outputs to the various devices throughout, and you also have local monitoring. So you could see what you're sending basically. Which is perfect. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, if you have a three-story building or so on, and you have these displays sitting on each floor, that you want to show off if there's a reception area for each floor, then at least you can send the signal via this guy because it will take that 70 meters 108OP via CAT cable. Yeah, so mm. just straight out of the box, HD based the output to the multiple receivers and you're done. No yeah. need for less devices, obviously, uh, results less in less of failure. Points, points of failure, mm. exactly. We're going to move on to our modular matrix range now, and we're going to expand on the usability and applications of these matrices. There are situations where the inputs and outputs differ in large installs. I mean, legacy VGA input from an outdated PC that needs to display a DVI input. How do you overcome this without multiple converters and additional points of failure with our modular matrix, of course? Yeah, as you can see, there are multiple models within this range, ranging from eight inputs, eight outputs to 144 in and 144 out. Yeah, that's a that's a lot. Yeah, these uh, the size of the rack required is displayed, fortunately. Which is great. I mean, if you have a look just from the presentation side, the modular matrix, the cage is 16 by 16, lets you know it's three units high and the 144 takes 10 units within your rack. 100%. So, so you can apply, plan accordingly. Yes, before you go without actually the receiving the equipment, you already know what's yeah. going on. So the outputs available are HDMI, DVI, VGA, SDI, HDMI, HD base T, yeah. as well as fiber. Yeah. There are also seamless options available, uh, seam fiber seamless options available for instantaneous switching. Always helps. Yes, it does. I mean, if you don't want to wait that additional two, three seconds for the next slide to move over or anything like that that you've got from your input, 
instantaneous. It's done immediately. Hundreds, those are available. The control options are either via the front panel buttons, RS-232, or TCP IP control, which assists when you're in a control room. And additionally, there's a redundant power input should the circuit that it's plugged into fail. Hundreds, yes. So again, you could maybe have this in a server room somewhere. Um, HD base T was church I was actually thinking of, yeah. where you have far end HD base T inputs to the matrix, maybe some local monitoring as well as some local inputs as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whatever the case might be, and then HD base T outputs or HD base T outputs as mentioned, and legacy legacy devices VGA as well. Yeah. So you can maybe mix and mix and match them as you'd like. You mm. don't you're not stuck with something. Just build them accordingly as required for your install. You know, all the planning that goes into it, you know that you're going to need three HDMI, one DVI, and one VGA input. You can yeah. do that with these guys, soldable cards, and off you go. I'm just, yeah, I'm just populate the, the, the um, modular matrix as needed. Unit as you need, the yeah, jacket, yes. Pretty much. Yeah. So if you only wanted one input and the rest, 143 outputs, for instance, you could you go could for do that. Yeah, on multiple different sorts of, you know, VGA, SDI, outputs, whatever the case outputs. may be. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to do the matrix switcher range, the ah. small entry level ones. Let's uh, let's start with the MEH 44 ARS. This guy over here. It has four in and four output HDMI. That's our four in, four out HDMI matrix, allowing you to push any input to any output. Have four different sources displayed onto four separate monitors, and the intuitive front but button panel layout makes this a breeze, simple and easy to operate. Yes, it also supports RS-232 and nice. IR for controls, ensuring that you need not to be at the device when doing the switching or splitting or sure. you know matrixing as such. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have a look at it because of its size, this is not going to switch in like we spoke about our modular matrixes. Sure. This is not going to go into a rack. This is most likely going to be mounted beneath rack the table. Rack is. Yeah. There we go. And Bob's it uncle. goes beneath the table. Now, you, of course, don't want to get down the whole time to change as you need to what input goes to what output. And that's where the control options come into play. 100%. Yeah. So I've actually seen a lot of these used in breakup and combination of rooms. Oh, yes. So if you have like smaller rooms, maybe four next to each other, three, whatever the case might be, yeah. all the inputs from these rooms into the matrix, uh, the outputs back to the displays. And yeah. then with a third party device, you could maybe just change, you know, one to one, two to two, if it's a breakup situation or yeah. one to all, whichever room to all of them. Which also makes sense. Once they've opened up the room and combined everything yeah. together, you can have all four of your displays displaying the, the same exact thing same from thing. whichever room yeah and you can just de-embed the audio at the displays which will then just obviously follow the video yes which is great we'll talk about that device yeah in the the yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. so we can help the you know i guess yeah. out hundreds now we're going to have a look at our alphatron alf muh 44 tpn which is our hd base t 4x4 <laughs> matrix it features four HD based outputs, which allows monitors or displays to receive the 1080 and 4K signal at 200. Sorry about that. Let's carry on. And apart Deep, from sorry. the embedded audio, embedded HDMI audio, uh, the ALF MUH44 TPN provides four auxiliary audio outputs. The audio output source is selectable via RS232 command. Selectable audio is output via the HDMI outputs and HD base T outputs and the audio output sockets. It also supports bi directional RS232 yeah. and IR control. Mm -hmm. uh, please note that the receivers are not included in this box. So well, sometimes you might sure. not need to use all of the outputs. Absolutely. So you can then just add on however many you need. I mean, additionally, if you have a look at our matrix, the first two outputs are also HDMI. So if you only needed one more receiver, you don't need to purchase a complete unit with four of those receivers in there if you're not going to use it. Sure, it adds a bit of flexibility on that part. Mm. Oh, and it makes it perfect for AV signal that is needed at far away display talking about HD base C. And of course, on multiple displays, which may need different information on different screens in different zones or departments. The Alphatron ALF MUH88 TPN features the same abilities as the one that's being displayed, the ALF MUH44 TPN, just with eight inputs and eight outputs for larger installs. That's it, yeah. The MUH44E 4K HD base T home distribution hub kit, yeah. which consists of the 
of a 4K HD base T matrix switcher, three HD base T receivers and accessories. So this mm -hmm. one does include the receivers, yes. three of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it consists of four HDMI inputs and three HD base T outputs with one HDMI outputs. Very so sense. again, local local monitoring. Yes. In line with our professional range of range of matrices, the unit is compatible via is controllable via bi-directional IR, mm -hmm. RS232, or guided user interface, known within the industry as a GUI. So yes. that's pretty pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, the web uh, address that you put in of the unit that you find at the bottom of it, and you're in the GUI and could then control this device however which you want. And of course, you can change that IP address to fit in with your system. Yeah. Now. The Alphatron MEH44E or the MEH88E is compatible or capable rather of delivering 4K signals up to 131 feet or 40 meters, 1080p up to 230 feet or 70 meters and powering receivers via a single CAT6 cable. The switcher also supports EDID management and is HDCP 2.2 and 1.4 compliant. Also, just bear in mind that the last output is meant for local monitoring as the output is an HDMI. Sure, so maybe where you have this in your uh, uh, cabinet, maybe in front, mm -hmm. we have a couple of TV boxes, let's say an Xbox or PlayStation, CCTV, whatever HDMI input. Right. You could sit in this to multiple different rooms within the building, house, whatever it might be. And then what is great about it, you could then operate the matrix switcher with a remote control, IR remote control from the remote room. Yes. So you just obviously it sends the IR remote through the CAT5 back to the unit and it then tells the unit what input you would like to see sure. and makes it ease of use. Absolutely, because if you really think about it, who wants to go back in time to have to go and change things individually? That's why you have the control options on these, these devices. 100%, maybe it's upstairs, you don't want to track all the way downstairs, go and sure. put all the buttons in the room, maybe the cabinet's even locked, uh, you never know. You don't know. So you, you don't know. Use Remote At least from you have got, remote, from remote. Yeah. and cool. you've got multiple control options as well, yeah. which just makes it so much better. So now we're going to get through to our Alphatron MUK44N. This is our cost-conscious matrix. It features not only basic functions like cross-point stitching and control IR, RS232, and IP, but also advanced functions such as auto downscaling for each HDMI output when it is connected to a 1080p display. Just note that Dolby Vision is not supported in downscaler mode. There is an SPDIF audio breakout for each HDMI output to provide more audio feeds in a multi-zone audio system. Something to mention about this unit, it mm -hmm. supports audio mute as the four SPDIF outputs can be muted separately via yes. API commands. Yes. If you do not have access to RS-232 IP control system. The unit has IR remote for ease of control. If Obviously, again, if you don't have RS-232 or sure. that kind of thing, normal IR remote control can do the job for you. Mm -hmm. By default, each input edit is set as 4K 6444 HDR with 1.5 channel encoded audio. This guy also supports the EDID presets with the uh, EDID copy and EDID write. Eh? Yeah. No, that's what this device does. It's a fantastic little product. So lastly, in our range here for the matrix is we're going to chat about the Alphatron MUK44N. It is a 4K 4x4 HDMI 2.0 matrix switcher with four HDMI inputs, four HDMI outputs, and four SPDIF audio outputs, which is designed for switching four HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2 compliant signals. The unit also provides powerful EDID management to ensure reliable AV distribution and routing. It is fully controllable via the front panel, IR, RS-232, TCP IP, and web-based GUI. This is the guy we're talking about. Yeah, the MUK88 has the same features as the MUK44, but obviously eight outputs, inputs, That's rather it. than four, so eight by eight or four by four. Maybe placed in a control room, different displays, and you want to mix and match or pull up whatever display on whatever uh, whatever input to whatever display, yeah. this is the guy you want to use. So also, yeah, like you said, controllable by our third party, RS-232, yeah. RS also the web IP. GUI on this one, and mm -hmm. yeah, again, a remote control. IR, EDID management dip switch right there as well, so you can put it for through for your views. displays. Absolutely, because with electronic displays nowadays, there's, there's so much 
different information coming from them and that's why EDID is prevalent in this case. And you never know what you're going to get on site. Yeah, so you've got two different displays, you've got to try and match them somehow. No. Play along with the EDID. You could go into the GUI and do the adjustments, yeah. but I mean on the fly you could just check on the manual what resolution, Change what edit you need and the depth switches are right there for yeah. ease of use. Especially for the guy who's integrating it now. You can go and play with it to have a look exactly that the displays are fine without actually having access, like you say, yeah. to the web GUI for the meantime. Yeah? So yeah, multiple mm. ways of doing the configuration mm. on the fly also. Yeah. Uh, next up, we are going to do go through the audio equipment of yeah. the Alphatron range. Pretty much our audio D embedders and converters. That's it. Mm. We're going to have a chat about these two over here. So we're going to chat first about the ALF CHKA2, which is, as you can see, a small size HDMI 2.0 audio D embedder with one HDMI input, one HDMI output and three types of audio outputs. It is designed to extract audio from HDMI signal via stereo balanced left and right audio, analog RCA and coaxial digital audio output ports. It supports 4K at 60 Hertz, 444, HDR, yeah. EDIT and CEC pass through. Mm -hmm. And the transmission rate is up to 16 gigabits per second. That's quick. That is quick. Yeah. Yeah. Moreover, moreover, there are three audio modes that can be chosen in order to be compatible with the various audio processing devices, namely PASS, Bitstream, and PCM. It's all sits on the right toggle there. switch right there. Yeah. Cool. We mentioned earlier that you would de-embed audio from the display, maybe doing a matrix to multiple rooms, and this is the device you would do it with. So, let's just, let's show them. Yeah. So, You're talking about the MEH44, <clears throat> hey? Right. No, this is the MEH44. Here is the Alphatron CHKA, and Donovan's going to walk us right through it now. So, the outputs. So we need input. Inputs. So yeah. the your HDMI. HDMI in, HDMI out to your display, mm -hmm. and then on the other side you got either your speaker out. Maybe you got a pair of active speakers in the room that yeah. would be used quite useful, or stereo audio outputs to legacy device mm -hmm. amplifiers from your RCA straight out. I mean, this is perfect because it goes. You could even have it as local monitoring if you wanted to. Output from there, input into this guy. It outputs the audio the separately audio. from there goes off into your display. Now, audio also, audio yeah. out of that directly into your, your system. And then obviously your audio just follows your video because you're de-embedding from the HDMI. That's it. Which makes it quite easy, yeah. easy, nice and easy to sure. set up a system. Even if you had to run this via HD base T, the output is HDMI into the CHKA2. So HDMI it takes the, the audio thing. and it embeds it, de-embeds yeah. it. And then of course you can just select as you need to. You know, if it's PCM, pass or bitstream. Now we're going to have a chat about the CB DAC, this little guy right here. It's designed to convert coaxial or Toslink digital audio input to analog left and right and 3.5 audio output. Simultaneously, the converter provides coaxial SPDIF output for a digital audio extension. The unit is ideal for interfacing between modern digital audio video devices with analog amplifiers or self-powered speakers. What's great about this device is that it supports one audio mm. input splitting to three audio outs. It supports up to 24 bits, 192 kilohertz inputs, PCM, yeah. Dolby Digital or DTS formats for digital audio extension only. Yeah. So as an example, uh, we could use the SPDIF Toslink uh -huh. audio outs. This is also another It's also feature. applicable yeah, to the MEH44 as well on top of it. 100%. Um, out of that, the yeah. CV DAC will then Toslink. convert the audio to analog output for legacy amplifier. So, Which yeah, of course, go yeah. audio out. So, what's our audio sense to all of these? So, you can use the coaxial stereo audio out, or maybe just a couple of headphones to make sure that you are getting the audio to this box. Yes. So, yeah. Or alternatively, you can just maybe it out to 5 down out. the line. Yeah. Sure. 3.5 more. A lot of guys like to use it. So, yeah. out of that into whatever device, and you still have your stereo. And off you go. Yeah. Yeah. Now we get to the last section of our presentation. We're going to talk about Alphatron signal cables. We're going to start off with the Alphatron HDMI, which I don't have with me here. The cables come in various sizes, ranging from as little as two feet or 0 0.6 meters up to 50 feet or 15 meters and are all capable of transmitting 4K signal. We have two unidirectional cables that have the USA active chipsets in them. And this is the 35 and 50 foot cables. Sure. So in addition, we also have the fiber HDMI that ranges from 
yes. 50 feet, which is 15 meters, or mm. 200 feet, 60 meters, with all, which are all 4K 6444 compatible. Yes. Just bear in mind that these cables are fiber and cannot be bent around tight corners. Yeah. The fiber itself might break initially and then, you know, just disrupting the signal completely. And that's where the problem comes in, of course, because of what it's made out of. I mean, once the light can't pass through, if it's jagged at all, you're not going to get any signal through whatsoever. As a rule of thumb, <laughs> with a fiber bends no more than the diameter of a can of coke. It may sound a little bit strange, but you know that you're not taking it even close to that 90 degree bend where you would have that possibility of snapping the, the cable itself. Sure, nothing worse than having a cable snap the fiber cable running it far away and you need to replace it. And you've, yeah, yeah, so or it is fiber. I mean, if you had if you had the splicing equipment, sure, but then you know, that's another whole story completely. It's not always easy. We've got a no. couple of, I'm sure there's a couple of pros out there that might do it quick and easy, but no, not yeah, generally. Endure. Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We are. So these guys, you're going to chat about these guys. Now. USB cable. Mm, yeah, two and three. Please take it away. Cool. So lastly, we're going to mention the USB extension cables. So we offer the USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 extensions from 16 feet, 5 mm -hmm. meters, or 50, 250 feet, 15 meters. Our USB 2.0 cables features a built-in EF 1.1S low-power signal booster chipset to active better compatibility and support high-speed HDMI 2.0 devices with data transfer rate up to 480 megabits per second. That's quick. It's a lot. USB 2. Our USB 3 cables support high-speed USB 3 devices with a data transfer rate of up to 5 gigs, even at 50 foot, 50 meter. The ones that we're displaying at the moment is a 33 foot, 10 meter USB 2 and USB 3. So basically, we need a bit of uh, HDMI, we HDMI 3.0 is required, that's a bit further than your usual given distances, um, you know, there you go, that's what you need. Just, yeah, just extend it with that USB cable right in, there. USB 3 out, sure. compatible, we've tested it with quite a bit of uh, products and it yes. works fine. Works yeah, 100%. we've tested it with our cameras as well, it's great to extend it, especially when that USB is only a meter and a half or two meters and you can't have it that close by. Hundreds, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. So. This concludes our presentation for today. I do hope that it has been informative. Um, please visit our website for more information, and not only on this presentation's offerings, but also on our other products. Thank you for your time. Keep safe, and we'll see you next time, unless there's any questions. Yeah, that, guys uh, on to go yeah. we've got some guys on the back end yeah, waiting for the questions, so please feel free. Okay, so we have a question about the bulge in the USB active cable. So, the chipset and so on sits within the PCB that is placed within this little bulge here. Right? So that of course would then go in through to your PC, and this would then be on the outside. If it doesn't give enough power on the USB 2 specifically because of the USB port on the PC, there is another little micro USB slot there that you could use like on old Android devices, you would have a power input there. This takes the same sort of power. So it would just give it that initial little boost to get the signal across. If the USB port from the PC itself does not give enough power, it doesn't give full five volts if it gives 4.6 volts or something obviously like that. Obviously over the distance, the voltage would drop and sure. you would need a bit of extra power. And that's what that USB goes from. Yeah. From your display directly into that mm -hmm. and all the, done. This, of course, on the USB 3 is a little bit different because the, the power is different on the USB port on the PC, for instance. So it's got two repeaters that will sit in there. And additionally, if the length is too much, we still have another power input on the side there. So the PCB sit within this bulge here. This is what is pretty much extending the signal. This is what's boosting the signal, repeating it. Yeah. Just having a look at our colleagues over there, if there's another question. Any more questions? It doesn't appear to be. Hold on. Oh, maybe something's coming through. One more. Oh, ah, no, good. that's it. That's it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we will have our signal management part three up in the next two or three weeks as well. Eh? Yeah, the yeah. video will be posted if there's some guys that unfortunately could not join. It'll be available on our website. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, on know, YouTube as well. 
We're there's there? also a chat function on the website if you guys yes. any other products you want yes. to maybe inquire about or you know there's some there's contact details please feel free we've got a group of tech guys behind it to support it so yeah, yeah please any questions you got post them there's always someone online 100 percent take care of yourselves goodbye cheers